So we're going to look at some of the main causes of injury um, in violinists. And instead of just diagnosing what these are, we're going to look at the alternative. Because it's all very well to say it doesn't feel good or it causes pain if you do the following. But if we don't replace it with something and develop technique in a different direction, then we don't really have a way to play. So let's start with left arm. And we're going to look at the twisting in the left arm and how to get the left arm up without the common problems in the wrist and in the forearm. So twisting, let's identify what twisting is. Twisting is when the hand moves away from the forearm like this on either side. And the common twist in the left arm is when the fourth finger starts pulling around towards the strings in an effort to get to the strings. So that's the common twist. And the experience in the forearm is that it's a little bit like taking a rag and wringing it out. You know, there's this pull this way. And very often, that right elbow is dragged across to the right of the instrument. So the hand is twisted this way, and the arm has all this tension in it. So two questions that we're going to answer. How do we get the arm to the violin without it getting tired? Like you were asking, how does the shoulder function? How do we get the hand towards the strings when the violin is over on our left without twisting? And there are two key things that we need to look at. One is falling up with the arm, and the other is a fundamental forearm rotation, which allows the hand to be turned in this direction. So let's look at falling up, first of all. We talked this morning about the basic alignment of the finger, hand, and forearm unit. And when we're playing, we have to remember that the fingers can't play on their own. They need the support of the forearm if they're going to feel good and strong and equal on the fingerboard. So if I need to take this finger, hand, and forearm alignment to the instrument, how do I get it there? So the way we learn this is we let the arm swing, which stimulates movement from the forearm, not from the shoulder, not from the wrist, not from the fingers. And then I'm going to let it fall up into place next to my body. Have a look. Looks like this. Now, there are a couple of things to notice. One is that you can see that the finger hand forearm unit settle. They settle into place. Can you see that? It's almost as if they're resting on a shelf here. You can also see that my arm is a very distinctive distance from my body. So the arm likes being relatively close to the body. It can't be too close and it can't be too far away. But the body recognizes this distance, and it's extremely comfortable here. So this is falling up. The movement's coming from the forearm. It brings my finger, hand, and forearm unit together. And I can bring the arm into a playing position. Now, when I do this, my upper arm is perfectly synchronized. This is what we call the willing upper arm. And we call it the willing upper arm because it can never start anything. If it starts, it's going to, whether it's a bow arm or left arm, it's going to get tired immediately. But it has to be perfectly synchronized. So when I fall up and I land here, this is completely empty, but with me. And my forearm is ready to go, finger, hand, forearm, unit, all lined up. And my basic alignment is in place. Can you see that? Now, most of the time, we don't even think about how to get that left arm up. You know, we think, here's the violin, and I'm just going to put my arm up somehow. We don't register this movement, this falling up movement, under the instrument. Now, another thing that came from this morning's discussion was how this area, where the shoulder rest sits, has to resonate with the movement of the arm. So if I'm letting this arm swing into place, I'm going to feel it resonate under here. So if I am frozen under the violin, then this is going to feel stuck and stuck in the shoulder. All right, so this is falling up. Problem is, if I fall up to here, where's my hand facing? The wrong way. So we have, and this is where the hand starts to pull around, and we end up with that twist coming in. So we looked this morning for the bow arm at this fundamental rotation in the forearm, where these bones are turning over from deep 
in the base of the elbow all the way back here. And you can see how this movement is free and resonating all the way through this upper arm. Now, if we need basic finger, hand, and forearm alignment to, to make the fingers play with ease, then the only way I can get my hand towards those strings is to use a fundamental turn that gives me basic alignment in the direction of the instrument. So this was falling up without a turn. I just landed about here where the hand sort of is facing me. Now if I add a fundamental forearm rotation to that falling up, it looks like this. And there's the hand. Notice that the design of my hand, if I were this way around, can you see the design of the hand? The design of the hand is exactly the same. This is this way around, this way around. Can you see it's the same? So we're combining falling up and what we call a fundamental forearm rotation. And it looks like this when you put the two together. Okay, so you can see that alignment is still there. Finger, hand, forearm. The hand is in the direction of the strings very easily, and the design of the hand remains the same, as opposed to pulling it around this way. All right, so fundamental forearm rotation plus the falling up motion. Um, right, because this is very common. So the question was, if I'm turning the arm and it doesn't seem to go where I want it to go and then I pull it around, it really hurts. And the answer is we train the arm a lot away from the instrument. So we put the vocabulary of this turn in until it's very, very easy. Because if it's not free all the way here, I'm just twisting anyway, which is where we started and what we were trying to avoid. So the first thing we would do is spend a lot of time just turning the arm until that language is trained into the arm. Then you can take it with you. And we would check that all this is moving with, with you and that this is moving with you as well. Okay, so it's really important that we, you know, what we're doing here is something that's going on for two days. And we have to understand that it is a training process and that we have to go through a certain number of steps. Now the steps, they, they don't necessarily take a long time. Sometimes they take longer because there are more issues in there, but it is a training process. Okay, hello, I'm Emily. Um, I'm a viola player and I've had a lot of problems with my left arm, um, particularly the wrist. I find when I have it in the position for the viola, I get a lot of tension and therefore pain. Um, all right, so let's, let's put your viola up now. Um, let's get rid of your bow for a minute. And I want you to put your left arm up how you would normally choose any note you like as if you were going to start a piece. How would you get the arm up there? Or would you already have it up by putting the viola up? To be up? honest, I wouldn't think about it. I would just put it up as okay. I've always had it. Um, okay. All right, and if you were in first position, second position, and you're moving... Right. Is it worse, the pain in certain positions, like if you're playing it's higher? Worse. It's worse and higher it's with my little than... finger particularly. Okay. All right, so let's look at these two fundamental principles. I'm just going to ask you to move that way a little bit. And the first thing, I'm going to hold the viola for you, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm going to take this arm down, and I want you just to swing it. All right, and as you're swinging it, I want you to notice, if I took the viola away, and you put your left arm up here, your right arm there, you're right down there. Can you feel that moving? Mm -hmm. All right, so the important thing is, is that when you move that left arm, when you swing that up and it falls up to play, that there is a resonance in the body okay. that allows that arm to move. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, imagine you were going to let it fall up and land on an imaginary shelf. Let's see if we can get that to swing up. So it's going to land about here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let it go. That's it. You feel how it's slotted into place? Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Good. And you can let the arm be a little bit more in a V shape, as if 
it's resting on something here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to swing it and let it just come up into that V. Let it go again. Let it slot in. Oh. There you go. <laughs> and again. Let it go. Okay, it needs to be closer to the body. And it's good. There we go. Okay, yeah. You feel that nice slotting yeah. in? That's it. Feels it feels much more natural. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now let's get it, let's just do it a few times. Good. Mm -hmm. Now if you're here, mm -hmm. do you feel anything in your shoulder? No. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so that, what that's telling you is that your forearm initiated the movement, mm -hmm. not the shoulder. Okay. And this is actually the only way you can get to the viola without this bothering you. Okay. What's very important is that you let the upper arm move with you and you let that resonate in this area here, mm -hmm. which is often that blind spot mm -hmm. where the shoulder rest is sitting. We're often not aware that that should be moving with us. So let's just do it, do it a couple of times and then we'll add the turn and let it slot in. <laughs> so there's no sense of holding. Great. Good. Good. That's it. Mm. One more time. Good. Let it fall in place here. I'm quite stretching on my hand now. <laughs> okay. Okay, just let that elbow slot back. Okay. Good. One more time. How does it feel? Very natural, that's for sure. Feels yeah. good. All right, so now you can see, see what the tendency is in the hand. This finger, already just thinking viola, is yeah. pulling around this way. Yeah. So this is where we need that fundamental turn, that fundamental rotation in the forearm in order to enable the fingers to play where the viola is. Okay. So let's work on that turn, okay? okay? And I'm going to turn your arm for you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel these? You've got two bones, right? You've yes. got this one, this side, and this side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to think all the way back here, and I'm very gently going to turn them. Beautiful. Okay. Great. And it, it's actually a really nice feeling. Mm. It's as if it's like, oh, it's just going to turn over. Yeah. Great. Good. Good. And you want to let this resonate up here too. Right. Yeah. yeah, if you hold on to my arm here, let your arm go for a second. Put your hand on here for a second. Okay. And you'll feel yeah. how that's, can you see it turning here? Yes, yeah. And put your hand on the back here. Can you see how that movement yeah, comes out the back it. of the, yeah. now if I don't have that freedom in the elbow, mm -hmm. I'm starting to twist. Oh, that's okay. the twist. You feel how tight that is in there? So that's the point at which my little finger is going to start pulling okay. towards the string. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's get that arm, just let it fall up to here. Lovely. And then we're going to let it turn. Very good. Mm -hmm. Good. And free in here. Make sure that wrist is connected and isn't floppy. Yes. Much better. Good. Good. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So the design of the hand in this position is the same as the design of the hand in that position. Mm -hmm. So that means that that basic finger hand forearm unit can function at the instrument. Okay. And then we can talk about how the forearm supports each of the fingers so we don't have to press. So, but this is your starting spot. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's, let's go to your viola for a minute. Okay. And let's see if we can start to make that work. Most of the time it's easier to go into third position. Mm. Okay, and I would, let's see if we can do the two together. Let the arm swing and let it turn as it falls up. Okay, okay? and I would send it to a finger. That's okay. it, and let's see what happens. Okay? Notice that I was holding this top right hand corner. All right, so let's get that left arm swinging. That's it. You're going to let it slot into there. Okay. Good. Let's just do it a few times. Good. Let that elbow be free. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going to do it for you. Okay. Okay? Even more for you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Feel the difference? Yeah. 
Yes, there you go. You feel the bottom of your elbow there? Yeah. Yep. Great. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually the experience of, of this is most people describe it, even when you do it yourself, it feels like somebody else is doing it for mm. you. It's yeah. so easy. Mm. All right, so now can you aim that here? I feel like it's a long way around, don't yeah. you? It's not a long way around. Well, that's much more natural, yeah. Great. You're starting to register where this mm, is. Yeah. Good. A couple more times. Really swing it. Yeah. Ah. There you go. <laughs> feel that? Mm -hmm. It's it's very it'll yeah. Mm. How does that feel? Much much better. Much better. Much Good. Better. And if you turn this way, then they can see see how instinctively this is starting to fall into place and she's got this unit from the top of the hand to the bottom of the elbow.